Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for tuning in to today's Mad PD uh, session. Uh, my name is Joe Gorowski. Um, I'm a teacher in Guelph, Ontario, uh, grade seven math and science. And uh, just want to start off by thanking the organizers for setting this event up. Um, and anybody else who checks out this event um, either during or afterwards online. So uh, this presentation uh, is going to be a little bit about opening your classroom up to the world. Um, some things that I use in my classroom, a little bit about an organization I started. So I'm going to start by sharing my story for a few minutes, um, what I did to open up my classroom and where it led uh, me and my students on this incredible journey that's still going. I'm going to share a little bit about um, the organization I launched, Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. And then after that, um, I'll wrap up by sharing a few other little things that I like to use in the classroom um, that others can check out as well. So, um, just quickly, um, I'm going to share screen with you. So just give me a moment to set that up. And then from there, I'll share a PowerPoint presentation. And we'll go from there. So here we go, sharing screen. All right, so I can see some viewers starting to come on. If you do have any questions, please share them in the YouTube uh, chat sidebar, or even just say hi and, and let me know who you are and where you're watching from. I'm more than happy to answer some questions uh, towards the end of the presentation. So um, let's go full screen. There we go. All right. Um, perfect. So uh, Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants, that's the name of the presentation today. A little bit about me, uh, here's a picture. You can see uh, my wife Liz, my little guy Finn's in JK now. And then we just welcomed um, Nora. So Nora's seven months old now. I first decided I wanted to be a teacher when I was living in Australia. My wife was going to University um, of Wollongong for Teachers College and I was um, bartending and traveling. And I realized that I wanted to share my passion for travel, for adventure, exploration, and science with students. So when we got back, I went to Nipissing University and went from there. So I'm currently teaching grade seven math and science in Guelph, Ontario. My favorite thing to do, my hobby, is scuba diving. So I've been very lucky. I started 10 years ago in Australia. And I've been able to dive in some really cool places all around the world. There's a green sea turtle in Australia. Got some Caribbean reef sharks in the Bahamas. Uh, great hammerheads in Bimini. You can see they like to sneak up behind you. All right. So I guess it's four summers ago now, I saw an article um, on CNN about Fabian Cousteau. Jacques Cousteau's grandson was going to live at the bottom of the ocean um, for 31 days in the world's only underwater laboratory. He was going to beat his uncle's record by um, a day. It also said he was going to Skype with classrooms and I realized right then and there that my class was going to be one of those classrooms. I was going to do whatever it took to make sure my class um, was one. So I contacted his PR person and she turned me on to something called Skype in the classroom. So we'll talk a little bit about Skype in the classroom later uh, and some of the things you can do with your class. One of our very first connections, though, ended up being with an orphanage in Uganda. So these kids were age 5 uh, to 17. Uh, they just got the technology, so it was barely working. It would blink on and off sometimes. But seeing my kids on one side, uh, these other kids thousands of miles away, dancing, laughing, singing together, having fun, it was just a big aha moment. It made me realize the power that this technology could have. So it got me really excited uh, to keep digging and seeing what I could find. We started doing connections to supplement our science units. Um, you know, the students got so excited, we decided we were going to do 50, 50 connections with scientists, explorers, um, conservationists, adventurers from around the world. Uh, we ended up doing 52 by the end of the year, but I would never do that many again. We were just so excited that first year. Now we limit it more to 20 to 25. But just to give you an idea of what kind of things were out there, a few of our connections from that first year that I found just by reaching out to people. So this is Jeremy Henson, uh, can't, one of Canada's two remaining astronauts. He contacted us from the training facility in Houston. 
We've got Jean in Antarctica. So she lives there for four months a year in a tent with the Adelie penguins. So she's sitting in the colony and, and talking about the penguins and taking the students' questions. The penguins were looking in the camera. Uh, it, was, it was hilarious. It was really cool to be able to do something like that from so far away. Nazar Ibrahim is a Nat Geo explorer. He's a paleontologist and made some recent exciting discoveries in Morocco. Andrea Marshall is another Nat Geo explorer, uh, marine biologist, world leading manta ray expert, um, discovered two new species. So she's always fun to hang out with and a big supporter of exploring by the seat of your pants. We're learning about uh, global warming. So we contacted someone in Iceland who talked to us from a glacier talk to us about what was happening to Iceland's glaciers and then geology we met Hugh James and his expedition that's Mount Etna in the background and as he's talking about volcanoes Mount Etna was spewing steam and and ash out behind him so it's pretty wild we early on I mentioned earlier that I'm a diver and but my students never seem to believe me when I say sharks have a bad rep and they're not as bad as they hear about uh, on TV um, so we had a connection with a marine biologist from Sharks for Kids, Jillian Morris, and she talked about her experiences in the water with sharks filming underwater, and it totally flipped my students' thinking on their head. They went from being afraid of sharks and wanting nothing to do with them to wanting to fight to protect them. And we decided to do that a couple of ways. We wrote letters to the Prime Minister, persuasive writing, uh, asking for shark fin products to be banned in Canada. And then we heard that there was going to be a shark call in Western Australia. And the premier decided, you know what, the best way to keep people safe from sharks is just to start killing um, all the large sharks near beaches, whether it was fishing for them or putting out baited lines. So my students researched, they wrote open letters, and he wrote back and basically said to them, you know, thanks for the letters, but you guys don't really know what you're talking about. And that didn't sit well. So my students wrote back again with even more research. And in the process, we made headlines in our local paper, but we also made headlines in Western Australia. Um, so you can see there um, one from Perth Now and another article from Western Australia Today. And then we did a few other things. We did some uh, ad campaigns, radio interviews, and we even did a video for Sea Shepherd in Australia. Really had an impact on my students. They realized their voice can be heard even across the planet. Doesn't matter how old that they they are, they can still make an impact. And it, you know, all in all, just an incredible experience for the students to reach out, learn something new, and put it into action. It was the best persuasive writing I've ever had from a classroom. That grew into a guest speaker tour. We wanted to share our learning with the school board. So it's been running three years now. Year one was. Uh, biologists, marine biologists from Sharks for Kids came to Guelph and they visited all our schools. Year two was Emily and Travis. Uh, Emily is an adventurer from the UK and she did our high schools and Travis is a primatologist studying lemurs and he visited our grade schools. And then in the bottom right corner you can see James Ketchell. Adventure from the UK was in a terrible <clears throat> uh, motorbike crash years ago. Uh, busted up his legs, doctor said prepare for more of a sedentary lifestyle, and he responded to that challenge by forming his ultimate triathlon. He um, climbed Everest, rode solo across the Atlantic Ocean, and biked 18,000 miles around the world. So talk about uh, an amazing person to bring in and talk about perseverance and overcoming challenges. I couldn't resist getting in on the action. I started presenting and sharing, uh, teaching classrooms in India and um, Australia, Argentina, and other places in the US and Ireland about diving and oceans, showing them my equipment. Even did a live one you can see in the top right corner when I was in Bimini from the shark lab. Uh, and they did a workup of a little baby lemon shark for us. So it was a lot of fun kind of taking, in, taking part in those things. And as luck would have it, our 50th connection uh, near the end of the school year ended up being with Fabian Cousteau from the bottom of the ocean during Mission 31. I think it was day 13 that we connected and just kind of brought everything full circle. Kind of the guy who inspired us to get started by stumbling across that article ended up being our 50th connection and, and things have just gone from there. 
So I said I'd talk about a little bit of the tools that got us started. So I got started using something called Skype in the classroom. And, um, you know, there's three, there's, there's multiple ways to use it, but three of the most popular are collaborating with teachers around the world and connecting your classrooms. You can find guest speakers and you can find some virtual field trips as well. So a uh, quick Google search of Skype in the classroom will bring it up. It's run by Microsoft. Uh, it's a rather large, um, tens of thousands of teachers in this community. And it's really easy to get started after you make a profile and start reaching out. So one thing we love doing is Mystery Skype. It's a fast paced geography game where the classrooms don't know where each other are located and a race with questions to be the first to identify the other class. And um, not hard to set up. You reach out to other teachers on Skype in the classroom or you put a lesson up saying you're looking for a teacher in the US or a teacher in Europe or something for a Skype. Arrange a time together uh, to meet up and then afterwards share your story, share it via social media, share pictures and such. There's four ways to play. The first way is 20 questions, and this is for beginners or younger groups, and anything goes. The students can ask whatever they want, um, whether it's what language do you speak, what kind of food do you eat, do you border an ocean, any answers are on the table. As the students get a little stronger, you can switch to yes or no version. So limited to 20 questions and things like, are you in the Northern Hemisphere? Are you landlocked? Do you border the Hudson Bay? Does a mountain range border your state and whatnot? Um, it's a little bit of a step up. And then version three is when you step back. You step back uh, other than stepping in if something goes wrong with the technology and the students run the whole hangout. So uh, you give them jobs, greeters, questioners, runners, mappers. Um, people can blog or take pictures or live tweet. You can have people close off the hangout or share facts afterwards. So you want to give them jobs and step back and watch. And it can be incredible to watch their questioning skills grow. Um, the first year, towards the end of the school year, I thought I'd throw a curveball at them. And I found a little island called Alderney in the English Channel about three miles by a mile and a half, and threw that at my students, and they had it in 15 questions, which was pretty incredible um, to see that growth. And the fourth way to play, when you're at school, China, Japan, Australia, they're all in bed. So Skype has a, a video message function, so you can record three questions to send to the other classroom. When you come back the next school day in the morning, there's three answers waiting for you and three more questions. So you listen to their answers, and send back three more questions. Um, could last a whole week, maybe even longer, but it's a great bell activity and the students had a lot of fun reaching places you normally couldn't through the video messaging. Um, just a few pointers if you do wanna try Mystery Skype in your classroom. It's always a good idea to set up a test call with the teacher, um, maybe the day before, just a minute or two, just to make sure the technology looks good, verify they are a teacher in a classroom, uh, you know, just to be on the safe side. Um, and another one would just be, and this is just in general, if you're going to use video software in your classroom, is just to send something home at the beginning of the year, a blanket media statement, just to say, we're going to play these games on Skype. We might do things over Google Hangouts. Um, <clears throat> so asking for permission and then holding that for the year. And I found in five years so far, I haven't had a parent say no to taking part in these kind of online activities. And even if you did, um, it's a very simple solution. If you had two or three parents say no, then the students just sit to the side out of the camera view. They can still see and hear everything, but they're not on camera. So it's a pretty simple solution. A few other ways uh, to use Skype in the classroom, supplementing your units, as we mentioned um, already. Reading buddies, you could have your reading buddies in another country or another province or state. Meet once or twice a week with one-to-one -one technology. Book studies, two classrooms, both reading outsiders. Uh, could meet every once in a while to answer questions and bounce things off each other. Pen pals, um, sharing presentations. So my class would present to our class, but then they'd also take a turn at being the teacher. We'd put a lesson up on Skype in the classroom, and then they'd teach their, or they'd share their presentations with other classrooms in different states and such. The mystery Skype, which we've mentioned, you can collaborate with other classrooms on projects. There's tons of authors you can find. 
and then writing ideas. Like I said uh, earlier, the best persuasive writing I ever had was after one of these hangouts when the students got passionate and excited. To give you an idea of what a supplemented unit could look like, uh, a few years ago when I was teaching grade six, we had our space unit and we added in these virtual connections. Um, we connected with the Canada France Hawaii telescope for a tour on the top of a, an extinct volcano in Hawaii. We talked to astronaut Jeremy Henson. Um, down at the bottom, we talked to someone at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory who actually sends commands to the Mars rover. And then they want to know about aliens. So we connected with an astrobiologist who taught them um, how people are really looking into space and looking for life around our planet. <clears throat> and that brings me to my project, Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. So after two years of making classroom connections um, to share with my class, uh, I was sitting around the summer 2015 and thinking, why are only 25 or so students enjoying this each year? And it kind of pushed me into acting and I, and I launched a not for profit called Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants um, with a goal of bringing science, adventure, exploration and conservation to classrooms across North America through um, virtual speakers and virtual field trips. Um, really had no idea what I was doing at the time and if I'm being completely honest, I'm still learning on the go, but it's been an absolute blast. We have thousands of classrooms across North America taking part. Um, we've hosted well over 300 Google Hangouts with leading experts from all over the world. So it's been an absolute blast. <clears throat> so we're switching over from Skype, which is great for one-to-one -one connections, to what I use for exploring where they see your pants. I use a Google Hangout, or more specifically, something called a Hangout on Air. And in fact, that's what we're doing right now, a Hangout where you're broadcasting. So for each Hangout, I can have up to eight classrooms from different locations join in live on screen. They can interact with the speaker, they can ask questions. At the same time, it's streamed live over YouTube, so any individual or any classroom can choose to watch live. And then they record to YouTube. So I've got this great library of, you know, getting close to 200 Hangouts now that students can and teachers can watch at any time if they miss something or it matches up with a unit that they're studying. We have some really awesome partner groups, groups like Nat Geo, Canadian Geographic, um, Penguin Rehabilitation Centers in South Africa, Ripley's in Toronto, uh, groups like Sharks for Kids and Planet Madagascar. We have a ton of really cool groups, and not just groups, but institutions and tons of individual explorers and adventurers and scientists uh, who share their work with, with us and with students. A few pictures of classrooms in action. Here's a classroom in New Jersey. A lot of time they'll have their one-to-one -one tech so they can look things up, so that they can find questions and dig a little bit deeper while the Hangout's going. You can see the students get pretty excited about it. This is a group in Weatherford, Texas. And actually, I think this, this screenshot was on the cover of their local paper uh, after the Hangout. The Sea Turtle Hospital, we've got a few of those up right now. Um, in the Florida Keys is always a hit. You get to meet tons of sea turtles, all different sizes and species, learn about their biology and the threats they're facing and what they do to get them back into the wild. And it's pretty interactive. The students love taking part in these hangouts, asking questions, um, cheering when it's time. It's a lot of fun. And um, yeah, you get to meet some pretty cool people. So this is George Karunas. He's a Canadian adventurer and explorer. Uh, he's also one of our board of directors now. You may recognize him from Angry Planet on Weather Network. Um, yeah, he's a blast. He's always been super supportive. So lots of good stuff happening. Lots of hangouts your classrooms can join in with. So we run about 10 to 20 Google Hangouts a month. Um, but we've also started a full day events. So last World Oceans Day, we went 12 hours straight. 26 speakers back to back to back uh, for 30 minute hangouts um, and had well over 10,000 students uh, take part that day. So um, ocean rowers, explorers, adventurers, scientists, uh, you name it, we had them all taking part, aquariums, turtle hospitals. We did another one in February to celebrate amazing women in science and, and exploration. And I think we had 27 hangouts that day, back to back to back, some of them running at the same time. 
topics from uh, conservation, cave diving, living in Antarctica, um, disease prevention, exploring the universe. You know, you name it, we had it that day. Recently, in April, we hosted a Shark Week with Sharks for Kids. So those are all up online. On May 23rd, we are celebrating biodiversity. So we have a whole day of Hangouts being launched for that. There's about 15 up right now that you can sign up for with your classroom, whether you want to be on camera or just view. And then June 8th, we're doing Exploring Oceans by the Seat of Your Pants, part two. So we're going back into the oceans on June 8th. We, what we do is 100% free. We never charge a classroom uh, for joining in and taking part. But we are a nonprofit, and we do try to raise money through um, uh, grants, through sponsorships, because we want to give back to really cool science, really cool expedition, really cool conservation work around the world. And to date, we've given back about $15,000. So we scored a really big grant from the CST Inspired Minds Learning Project last year. Basically, roughly 300 learning projects across Canada went into a voting process and we made the top 10. And from there, the celebrity judges took over and they unanimously chose uh, Exploring by the Seat Your Pants for the $100,000 prize. So as I mentioned, we've donated about $15,000 to projects around the world. We have a new website being designed and then we've used another chunk of that money for another goal, which is to open up all of the world to classrooms, to leave no spot where you can video broadcast from. So we're doing this with something called BGAN units. So these units are the size of a textbook. You can plug them into the computer, point them at a satellite, and from there you can broadcast video from anywhere in the world, pretty much other than the extreme poles. So um, these are normally used by reporters in the field or people out searching for minerals or oil in the middle of nowhere so they can you know, message back and such or broadcast. But we saw an education um, use for it and we've been piloting it for about six months now. So we have two units. Um, the very first one was sent to uh, the Bahamas with National Geographic, an expedition with Kenny Broad and Jill Heinerth, who's one of the top female explorers in Canada. And they were exploring these underwater, these underground caves, these um, that very few people actually explore. And, and they were 3D mapping them in augmented reality for classrooms to use later. And we did two hangouts from the fields where they had the cave divers jumping in, creatures that they brought up from the cave. There were paleontologists, ecologists, students from the Bahamas jumping in and, and sharing experiences with us. So it was a blast to kick things off that way with the first two hangouts. Right now, one of the hangouts is on the most, or one of the begans is on the most isolated coral atoll on the planet, Clipperton, in the middle of the Pacific. And we just became the first to broadcast from there. Uh, that was on Thursday, so you can find that video up on our YouTube channel. Another unit is in Belize at an archaeological dig site. Um, we're going to be exploring uh, the ruins of an old Mayan city every Wednesday, starting May 17th up until the middle of June. We'll visit classrooms and, and share the progress of the expedition. And next year, we're going to start something called on-call hangouts. So you can never guarantee when something really cool is going to happen in the field, like a lion kill or a shark being tagged or bears being present. So if we know an explorer is in the field with one of our units, um, we'll gather classrooms who can be on-call that day. And if they catch a shark uh, to tag it, they can call me, I can call the classrooms, and we can all jump on and we can see this real life science in action. So on-call hangouts are coming, uh, hopefully for September. We've just partnered with the Canada C3. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's a signature Canada 150 project. Um, this old, this uh, refurbished icebreaker, they're gonna take it on a 150 day journey, um, leaving from Toronto. Uh, through the Northwest Passage all the way to Victoria. And they're going to be making tons of stops along the way in different communities, in different UNESCO World Heritage sites and such, and sharing the amazing parts of Canada, the North, um, and the people that do live there. So it's broken up into different legs. There's people jumping on and off at different stages, different scientists, different uh, youth ambassadors and such. And we're going to host about 15 Google Hangouts. We've already hosted one. 
an introductory hangout. On Monday at 1 o'clock Eastern, we are going to do a virtual tour of the ship. And then from there, on June 8th, our next hangout, they'll be in action and the expedition will start and we'll do a series of hangouts throughout, leading through October. All right, I'm gonna jump a little bit to another topic near and dear to me and another thing you can use to open up your classroom to the world is just to talk a little bit about National Geographic. And last year, I was thrilled to be named a National Geographic Grosvenor Teacher Fellow. If you don't know what that entails, it's pretty much the ultimate PD opportunity. So uh, every December, they open um, applications. Um, you can apply uh, to take part in this experience. So they take 35 teachers from all across North America. You head down to DC for uh, four days of workshops and such, and then they send us you off into the world, maybe Antarctica, maybe the Arctic, maybe the British Isles, or in my case, the Galapagos. You take in the experience and get back and you build PD around it uh, for other teachers, lessons to share, um, do presentations in classrooms, presentations to your community. It was an absolutely incredible experience and I highly suggest you look it up and bookmark it for December to apply for this experience. So here's the 35 of us in Washington before our expeditions. And it was exciting. There were four Canadians last year, uh, which they said was their most ever. So that's pretty cool. And 10 days, 10 days in Ecuador in the Galapagos. So I was on the National Geographic Endeavor, a 90 person expedition vessel. And I won't go into too many pictures, but you can see some of the amazing animals. It's just like people you hear about it in the news or on documentaries. The animals could care less you're there. Um, they don't see you as a threat. You can watch their behavior. You can, they come really close. It's absolutely incredible uh, visiting these islands. And then here's a few more kind of scenery shots from the islands. With National Geographic, I founded something called Explorer Classroom. Uh, so each month we connect with anywhere from one to three of their explorers uh, for hour-long hangouts and the explorers share their work and some of their adventures with National Geographic and then launch into a big Q&A session with the classrooms joining live on camera as well as classrooms uh, joining live via YouTube. So a few people we've hosted, Mike Lebecki is an adventurer and we're actually hosting him again on May the 9th at 1 p.m. Eastern if you want to check that out. Paul Salopek, a journalist, he's on a mission to walk from Ethiopia, tracing our migratory routes of humans all the way to the tip of South America. So that could take anywhere from seven to 10 years. And we've connected with him a few times from the field. And then Asha DeVoe, so she's a marine biologist studying blue whales in Sri Lanka. Recently, we connected with Bob Poole, wildlife cinematographer. Um, I highly suggest you check that one out on the Nat Geo YouTube page. Um, he had some just amazing stories to share with classrooms from his experiences throughout Africa. You can become a Nat Geo educator now. Uh, the new certification program is officially launched. Um, a little bit about Nat Geo's mission there and the benefits. So professional recognition, being a Nat Geo educator, connecting to their amazing network of educators uh, from across North America that's growing by the day. And then a few perks like uh, getting to take part in special hangouts and discounts with National Geographic. It's broken up into three parts or phases. Part one is a workshop that you can do online. Part two are some lesson activities. You build a few in your classroom um, related to geography or a science unit you're studying. And then part three is the capstone project. So you build a two minute video to share your learning with the National Geographic community of educators. And from there, you are a National Geographic educator. So pretty cool certification. And really big news, exciting news. Um, official as of May 1st, National Geographic announced their 2017 Emerging Explorers. Um, they picked 14 people from around the world. Um, scientists, uh, explorers and such who are doing really exciting things and they picked me which is absolutely unexpected and, and mind-blowing but so incredible. Um, 
there's a grant that comes along with it, as well as uh, heading down to Washington for Explorers Week in June, and then having National Geographic support and amplify uh, the work of Exploring by the Seat Your Pants. So pretty incredible and totally unexpected, but pretty awesome. To wrap up, just a couple more things that I use in my classroom. If you've never heard of the Google Cultural Institute, and in fact, I believe the name has just changed to Google Arts and Culture, but it'll still come up in a search under Cultural Institute. Uh, this is broken into three parts. So there's the art project. They've gone all over the world, photographed all the works of art in different museums, whether it's sculptures or pictures in high resolution. You can zoom in on them right down to the individual paint strokes. Um, it has all the information on the artists and what the painting means and where it is and, and its, its role in history. And then you can click on the little Google Street View guy and you can see where it is, uh, what museum it is, and then you can virtually tour that museum afterwards. So pretty cool. Historic Moments is the second one. And that is Google's gone out and collected artifacts and pictures and letters and, and video from different historic events, whether it's Nelson Mandela, whether it's World War I or II, um, and such. They've got these beautiful walkthrough lessons you can go on um, and look at the letters, the artifacts, the posters, um, all these really amazing things. Sometimes there's YouTube tour guides who follow along with you and, and, and talk to the class. It's, it's pretty wild what they're putting together here. And then lastly, World Wonders. So um, I think it's called Places now, but They've taken their 360 spherical cameras and gone through all the UNESCO World Heritage Sites around the world. And you can drop in and do a virtual tour of those. And that's just a fun activity sometimes if kids finish early. Uh, you can turn them loose onto the World Wonders or the Art Project, and they can do some of their own learning. So it's pretty, pretty powerful tool. It's pretty awesome. Google Earth Engine is another cool um, Google product. So um, they've taken the satellite imagery from around the world for the last 30 years and they've um, deleted all the cloudy days and so now you can look anywhere in the world and watch it change over the last 30 years via satellite. So you can look at glacier retreat, you can look at deforestation in the Amazon, um, urban growth in places like Las Vegas. As the city grows you can see the reservoir shrink. Um, Dubai and the crazy stuff they've been doing down there with their palm islands and such. So really neat tool to show how the world's changed in the last 30 years with the time lapse. And lastly, the new Google Earth was just launched. So if you haven't checked it out, uh, please do so. Um, you can find it online as well. And there's four really neat things that I've been using. Uh, the first one is Voyager and it's a showcase of guided tours that can take you places around the world. Um, there's about 50 up so far and more being added each week, but my favorite by far is the Nash, uh, Natural Treasures from BBC Earth. Um, the videos and the places it takes you is, is pretty incredible. There's a feeling lucky feature, so by clicking the feeling lucky, it just takes you somewhere in the world to one of 20,000 places they've, they've kind of set up um, with different cards and learning uh, that you can take your students on. So it's a roll of the dice. You don't know where it's going to take you. They have the new 3D imagery um, that you can turn on and off. So you can zoom in on a city or the Grand Canyon and turn on the 3D imagery and get a look at the city or the place, the landscape. And then lastly, this is home. So this is this is one of the Voyager stories, but it actually lets you take virtual tours of traditional homes uh, of different cultures around the world. So more being added uh, each month. But there's a few cool ones, like in Peru, uh, in Greenland, and a few other little ones you can come across. So Google Earth is another really cool um, thing to use in your classroom, especially since it's been updated and the new version's launched. All right, so I hope you enjoyed hanging out. Um, as I said, I'll turn off my share screen in a moment and I'll just check and see if there's any questions via YouTube. Um, please do let me know if you did watch along, um, who you are, where you're from, and if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to stick around and answer some questions uh, via the YouTube chat um, through the Hangout. Uh, the website's really easy to find, exploringbytheseat.com, and I made it just as easy as possible 
to use. So let's say you just want to watch a hangout. You're not ready to be on camera. You simply go to the monthly hangouts. There's a, there's a tab for May hangouts. And each hangout is there with a YouTube link. And that's the link you use to watch live or afterwards the hangout. If you want a camera spot, you just scroll down a little further to the bottom of the page and there's a book a camera spot, a Google form. Fill in your info. I'll get the message. If the spot's still open, I'll let you know. Well, I'll let you know either way, whether it is or not. Um, and then on the day of the Hangout, I will email you a special link 15 minutes before the Hangout. You click the link, and it'll bring you right on camera into the Hangout. So it really is one or two clicks to watch or three or four clicks to take part uh, live on screen. So. You can reach out uh, at Grabowski Scuba or Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. You can see those Twitters. And please do follow um, on YouTube, the Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. There's videos being added uh, pretty much daily, new Google Hangouts that classrooms can check out uh, and enjoy. So I'm just going to pop back out of the screen share now and come back. All right. Well, again, thanks everybody for hanging out. I'm just going to zip over to the YouTube just in case anybody did pop up a question. And I can see we have someone watching from Kalispell in Montana. And thank you so much for hanging out and checking out the Hangouts. I know um, that Kalispell has been a, a hub of activity recently. We've had lots of classrooms uh, joining in from there. So it's so cool to have them joining in. And there's another class I recognize from Manitoba, Miss Young, nice to see you. Um, they've joined in for a few Hangouts recently and might even be joining in again on Monday, if memory serves me correctly, for the, the virtual tour of um, um, the, C8, the C3 vessel. And Mrs. Sinclair, thank you so much for checking uh, the Hangout out today. So. Yeah, I'll just put out one more call. If anybody has any questions, feel free to punch them into the um, the YouTube link. Other than that, just a couple of things to share. Um, we have less Hangouts than usual this month. We have some of the Began Hangouts where we'll be in Belize connecting with uh, the archaeological team on the at the ancient Mayan city. So we have three of those coming up. We'll be doing a hangout with Canada's top eclipse chaser, uh, David Makepeace. So we should be announcing the date on Monday for that one at the end of the month. We're also connecting with Len Vanderstar. He is um, set to become the first person to climb all the tallest peaks in all the provinces and territories. So he's done them all. He's going on his final mission uh, to Ellesmere Island uh, in June. So we're going to connect with him on May 18th at 1 p.m. Eastern. He's going to share some of his adventures climbing peaks around Canada uh, and the one adventure that he has coming up. Um, what else coming up? May 23rd is biodiversity. We're going to have a full day celebrating and, and most of those events are up online. You can sign up with your classrooms now. And then June 8th, we're celebrating oceans. So that's another opportunity. We'll have between 20 and 30 hangouts. Um, the classrooms can watch live or they can join in live, interact, and ask questions. All right. Well, again, thanks everybody for hanging out today. Um, and anybody who will be watching this in the future, I'm always available if you have any questions. Um, you can find the contact on the website at Exploring by the Seat. You can connect with our Facebook page, our Twitter account, um, subscribe to us on YouTube. Um, You'll really want to check out some of the videos. The latest one from Clipperton Atoll um, was just mind-blowing. This is one of the most remote places on the earth, but with our new technology, we can now broadcast from anywhere. And uh, with a new grant from National Geographic that I've just acquired, um, we'll be they'll be funding our satellite time for the next year to year and a half. So we will be sending these units all over the world, and we will be bringing things in the classrooms that haven't been before. So. Maybe I'll just sign off with a little piece of advice is if you do want to jump into the world, just don't hesitate. Start small if you want to, but um, I think you'll find like I did, it's going to change the way you teach. It's going to change the way your students think, their questioning skills, their knowledge of, of our planet, 
Um, they really do start to become little global citizens and it's just an absolute blast. You'll find you won't be able to stop um, so much out there, whether it's Skype in the classroom, um, exploring by the seat of your pants, the incredible Google products they're putting out. Um, the world is there to be explored, so don't be afraid to open up your classrooms to the world. And I just, <laughs> Miss Young is just saying, and I'm, I'm teaching full time, and that is true. I, uh, I teach grade seven math and science. I've got two little characters at home that keep me busy. And thank goodness this is a passion project and something I love, or it would be pretty torturous, but I love doing it. And it's been pretty exciting and rewarding so far, meeting so many cool uh, explorers and adventurers from around the world and scientists, and then meeting a lot of really cool teachers, whether it's through online things or live in person in conferences. So it's been a blast. I hope everybody's enjoying uh, Mad PD. Um, uh, again, another big thank you to the organizers. Thank you for inviting me. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, I'm going to check out a few of the recorded sessions and it looks like it's been a pretty wild day. So again, thrilled to be part. Thank you everybody who hung out today. And, uh, I hope to see you exploring by the seat of your pants soon. So enjoy the rest of your weekend and, uh, thanks for hanging out.